given a planned route, we now have to follow that route. And that process is further split into two sub stages, behavior planning and motion planning. And now in this unit, we're going to look into the behavior planning stage. To follow a planned route, the vehicle must conduct various maneuvers, as we've seen already in the beginning. Examples include speed tracking, car following, stopping, merging, etc. It is difficult to design a motion or path planner for all maneuvers jointly. And therefore, the behavior planning stage discretizes the behaviors into simpler atomic maneuvers each of which can be addressed with a dedicated motion planner on its own. The behavior layer must take into account traffic rules, static and dynamic objects. The input to the behavior planner are the high level route plan that we've seen before, for example, planned using the A star algorithm, and of course the perception stack. And the output of the behavior planning stage are the motion planner constraints constraints such as the driving corridor, objects in the vicinity of the vehicle, speed limits, the target location, etc. Frequently used models for behavior planning are in the discrete or in the deterministic case, the finite state machine, FSM and its variants, and in the probabilistic case, the uh, Markov decision process, MDP, or partially observed Markov decision processes. In this unit here, we're going to focus just on the deterministic finite state machine. A finite state machine is defined mathematically by a quintuple, as indicated here, where sigma is the input alphabet in this case, this example here, alpha, beta, and gamma. S is a non-empty set of states, in this example here, S0 and S1. F subset of S is the possibly empty set of final states, in this case, that could be S1. And S0, element of S, is the initial state, the state that we're starting in. And in addition, we have the so-called state transition function delta that maps from the uh, a state and a character from the input alphabet to a new state. For example, if we're in state S0 and we're receiving gamma as an input, then we're transitioning to state S0. So we're not moving. If we are in state S0 and observing or are given the character alpha, on the other hand, then we are transitioning to state S1, etc. So here's a simple example. I'm not sure if you have kids, but if you have kids, you probably um, recognize that situation. So most of the time your kids are happy and everything is nice, but over time, they get tired, in particular um, in evening time. And so they um, get annoyed much more quickly and they start to cry and they're, they are really feeling unhappy. And so they are transitioning into that unhappy state here on the right and they're staying in that unhappy state, right? So the question is now, of course, how can you move back from that unhappy state to that happy state? And well, candy is something that most often helps. So, so far to a, a simple non self driving example, but let's look also at a self driving example now. So, here's a finite state machine for a simple vehicle behavior. We have three different states the green track speed state, the yellow decelerator stop state and the red stop state. So we're starting in the track speed state where the vehicle is just driving. If the uh, position is not equal to a approaching an intersection or a stop line, 
then we are going to continue to track the speed. But if the perception stack observes that we are approaching a stop line, then we are transitioning into the yellow decelerate to stop state, where we are we are, we are going to keep that state as long as the velocity is non-zero. So we're decelerating as soon as the velocity is equal to zero and we have reached the target location, the stop line location, we are transitioning into the stop, into the red stop state. And we're gonna um, stay in that state um, at least three seconds. So if the stop time is smaller than three seconds, then we're, we're gonna stay in that state. We're not gonna start immediately again. And we're only going to start to track the speed again if we have remained in that state for at least three seconds and there is no further traffic. So we can safely move on. So this is of course a very simple example just to illustrate in practice these finite state machines are much more advanced. So what could be potential states? Here is a four-way intersection and we have these boxes that indicate different states. So for example, we have one red box here that indicates approaching stop sign. Then we have the green boxes which are at stop sign. And then we have the orange box which is on intersection. Here's a, a real example also very high level still but a real example from the DARPA challenge from Stanford Juniors finite state machine. So you can see there's a locate vehicle state. Once we are located, we're in the drive state. Then from time to time, we have to cross an intersection or we have to park or navigate a parking lot. From the cross intersection, we can move back into the forward drive state. From the forward drive state, we can also move into the U-turn state where we do a U-turn and um, well, I guess finally complete the mission here. Now the question is like, how can these simple finite state machines be extended to much more sophisticated maneuvers? How to handle multiple scenarios in particular? For example, an intersection scenario and a highway driving scenario where the states and the transitions might be quite different. If we would extend a single FSM, this would lead to a explosion of rules. So a better thing to do is to use a so-called hierarchical state machine as illustrated here, where we have meta states, for example, the intersection scenario state and the drive lane scenario state. And we can transition between these meta states, but we also have states within these meta states, the uh, yellow, red, green ones here. Where we can trans if we are inside that state, we can transition within these substates as well. So the advantages of this is that it's simpler and more efficient, easier to understand, but the disadvantage is that some of the rules might be duplicated because, for example, at intersections as well as on uh, straight roads, we might need to decelerate and stop, etc. Here's an example of such a hierarchical finite state machine in this case, also from the DARPA challenge from Karlsruhe Anyways Planner. And you can see in this case that there is this drive state here, where in this state chart in the main level, you can move from drive to replan to intersection to drive to zone to drive and so forth. And this drive state itself has certain substates. For example, drive on lane, lane change, drive, turn, and so on. So a brief summary. Finite state machines are an elegant way to break complex behaviors into simple maneuvers. They are interpretable and easy to design. Um, however, when dealing with complex scenarios, uh, we have to avoid a rule explosion, which makes it less interpretable and, and harder to understand and more prone to bugs in the code. And finite state machines cannot handle noise or uncertainty. So if we want to do that, then we have to move to probabilistic models such as Markov decision processes. 
And also many of these finite state machines that have been deployed, for example, in the context of the DARPA Urban Challenge, used a lot of expert designed hyperparameters. And of course, it would be much nicer if you can learn that. And we could learn them, for example, using reinforcement learning.